It's time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online for all your website needs at sonicwebstudios.com. The Mike Wagner Show brings you interesting people doing interesting things all across the globe. Now, let's get started on the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com. Mike Wagner with you here on the Mike Wagner Show, powered by SonicWebStudios.com. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your web design needs. Visit SonicWebStudios.com and mention Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on TheMikeWagnerShow.com, also on Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and also on SoundCloud. You can also check out our programs as well, too, on podcasts. That's TheMikeWagnerShow.com. Of course, we have a singing sensation who's um, quite popular on social media, has quite a few singles out right now on YouTube. And, of course, um, she's also got a very, very up-and-coming single and working on a few projects. And, of course, we have, right out of California, a very upcoming singer. I've listened to her work. Very lovely. And she just rides like a classic car. Ladies and gentlemen, Audi Austrini. Audi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Mike. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. And of course, it makes me want to test drive an Audi as well, too. And I think there's too <laughs> many models out there. They're just so good. So you've been, <laughs> you've been a singing sensation in social media, like on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, also Facebook. You also had some singles out, like mm-hmm. Can High yep. Love, Waiting in Vain, One Night a Week. But well, first of all, before getting those singles, tell us how you got started in singing. Okay, so, well, I mean, I've always loved singing. That's always been a big part of my life. Um, I think as long as I can speak, I've always been <laughs> singing. Um, yeah, to the point that it almost just made sense that I would get into into it a little bit more seriously. So I grew up in Switzerland and then um, moved to Australia, and that's where I learned English. So I was able to... Um, be closer, I guess, to my dream in terms of uh, studying. I was doing music production and sound engineering over there um, just because I wanted to have something to fall back onto that would still be within, you know, the, the music the music world. Um, and then I decided to move to L.A. about three years ago to pursue my singing career. And uh, so far, it's been so good. So, yeah, it's been treating me kindly. So that's great. It's it's amazing too, and uh, who have you worked with so far? When it comes to those three singles, we'll talk about. Okay, so I've worked with a producer called Kyle Rush. He's based in uh, Los Angeles at the moment. Um, he's also up and coming more into the EDM world. Um, great producer as well. I've worked um, uh, with bands. I've worked with musicians such as Joey Heredia, uh, who's a very great drummer. I've worked with. Um, Joey Navarro, Michael Angel, who used to play for Prince. Uh, so a lot of great people, a lot of good support and uh, great mentorship, which has really helped me in terms of gaining more skills and, I guess, be a better, have a better musicianship. So that's something I definitely very, va- uh, very value, um, the feedback of my peers and uh, people that are in the same world as me. It sounds amazing, too. And how would you get connected as well, too, with um, famous musicians? So I got connected with these guys uh, through going out to places and kind of going out and uh, kind of seizing opportunities. A lot of, um, you know, in L.A. there's a lot of jam sessions and, and so on. And so I, I got to go there and and, uh, and I sat in on one uh, one song once, uh, which was Mashkanada. Um by uh oh i'm drawing a blank right now um but it was the version that they were playing and i really enjoyed it um by sergio mendes excuse me and brazil 66 so um i asked if i could jump on and and have a sing and i kind of i kind of you know try to fake my way through it but um but it it turned out great and i got to speak with these guys after doing their break and they said oh well you sound really good we want to you know talk with you get to know you more and so you know time after time i went to their gigs and listened to them play and they you know asked me to sit in on a few songs and we became pretty close friends and uh joey heredia and i are actually working on projects at the moment together um to 
to, you know, do some covers and rearrange them and give them, a, you know, old songs and new twists. So it's so far so good. It's going pretty well. What what examples of the work you're um, currently pursuing right now with your producer as well? So some examples? Yes, a little bit more in detail. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, sure. So, um, well, currently at the moment, I'm actually um, in the process of recording a cover album, um, just of just a bunch of arrangements that I've uh, that I've recreated, um, just to, I guess, give the songs a different, not a different meaning than what they were obviously written for, but just to give them a different twist, a different. Um, taste and I like to I like to maybe complicate them a little bit give them a different dimension so um, Joey and I have been working on uh, covers such as um, you know Earth, Wind and Fire songs that we kind of changing from their original to even like a samba or a bolero style and that kind of stuff which definitely is something new for me because um I was never exposed to that kind of music, that genre before, and I'm actually really enjoying it. So I'm starting to learn also to sing in Spanish. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm trying to include as much as I can and um, trying to keep it uh, within my myself also just to to keep it personal. For me, music is personal, so I want to keep it honest. Earth, Wind & Fire is also one of my favorites as well, too, and also one of my favorite genres being R&B and, um, mm-hmm. you, you know, also um, old school um, soul and everything else, too. And what are some of your other favorite artists and also favorite genres, and what genres are you willing to discover? Sure. Um, so my favorite artists range from uh, Jimmy Requai to um, Amy Winehouse, Earth, Wind & Fire, Stevie Wonder, um, in terms of pop, I grew up, you know, like a lot of the girls in the 90s listening to Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. So that's really been also a big part um, of my music. But I definitely, you know, Marvin Gaye, that, those kind of guys were really, for me, were really honest in the way they sang. And I love soul and R&B. And for me, that's definitely where I feel more comfortable. Um, I am at the moment... Uh, getting a little bit more familiar with jazz, which I also really enjoy. I'm having a lot of fun listening to, you know, Kind of Blue and, you know, Miles Davis, all kinds of um, Miles Davis, you know, uh, Chet Baker, those guys also, because I feel like, although they might not be so lyrical, um, except for Chet Baker, of of course, um, they have, you know, the way they create the melodies and the way they come up with parts really helped me in my music and to have a better ear and I guess to really listen to the band. And I think that's when the magic happens is when everybody listens to everybody. So I'm very open to all sorts of, you know, um, genres and I'm very excited to discover uh, them all if I get a chance to. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you got a great start on just about everything here. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to you in just a minute right here and I'd like to remind you, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com. Powered by Sonic Web Studios, visit online at sonicwebstudios.com. If you're looking for a professional website without breaking a budget, Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blows the competition away. Call today at 800-303-3960. That's 800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard also on Spreaker, SoundCloud, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. You can also catch the Mike Wagner Show also on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. We're here with Audi Austrini of California with um with her upcoming music and, of course, talking about her favorite artists and genres and everything. And before we get to your singles as well, too, who would you consider your biggest influences when it comes to music and your upbringing? Well, oh, that's a big question. Um, well, I think for me, oh, my biggest influence was probably Harry Belafonte because I, as I said, music is very much a part of my life. And my uh, grandmother, who I loved dearly and was very close to, um, when growing up, she would come and pick me up, you know, and drive me around when um, 
when I was finishing school and everything. And we would always listen to Harry Belafonte in the cl- in the car. And I think the joy that it used to bring her um, when I was singing along and when we were both singing along and to see her happy like that just made me really realize that music has such such a power, you know, it's such a healer. It's so magical that I can barely explain it. And I think that would definitely be probably my biggest influence was Harry Belafonte because of the joy that it brought to me and the memories that I built uh, listening to the to the songs. Um, then in terms of uh, vocal chops and all that, I would say, you know, Whitney Houston, I would say definitely uh, Amy Winehouse because I've always loved her voice. I have a darker tone to my voice, so I would always really much so um, connect with her because I felt like I had a voice that was able to sing some of her songs um, since they were at a lower range. And uh, I, yeah, I would definitely also mention um, Stevie Wonder, who I've listened to time and time again um, in terms of, you know, the way he writes and the way he he sings and his range and, and how it's it's almost like talking to him, you know, it's, it's a language and music is a language and the way he uses it, it's very fluent and it's, he's, you know, fluent in music and I can really admire and that's very motivating to me, people like them. It does sound like it. You've got a great background and a lot of uh, genres you cover. And of course, I mm-hmm. thought about Harry Belafonte. If you remember the song, the banana boat song, which is, yeah. it's like, you know, maybe you can <laughs> sing a little bit of it and see how powerful it is. I just love Harry Belafonte when they sing it. <laughs> yeah, it's a great song for sure. I do love that song. Okay, well, we can probably do it later on, too. But first, let's get to yeah, um, sure. your singles as well, too. You've got Can't Hide Love, you got Waiting in Vain, and you also got one which is on the verge of becoming a ch- chart topper called One Night a Week. So tell us a little bit about those uh, three songs. And if there's any songs I missed, you can cover those, too. Sure. So um, so the two songs that I would love to talk to you about is definitely One Night a Week, which um, – which is mostly an acoustic song. Um, it's uh, it's about um, <laughs> it's it's hard to explain. I think uh, I think I would let people discover what it's about. I think it's it can be a lot of different things at once. Um, but this song is for me very much so. Uh, an acoustic song it's very per- uh, not so personal but it's very open and I think in, it's very vulnerable for me this song so when I decided to release it I thought mm, I, I kind of thought about it for a while I had it, I had it written and I had it arranged but I wasn't sure if I wanted to release it and then I um, I actually showed it to a couple of people and they told me well you should release it it's a great song and it's actually you know we, I think people would really enjoy that and it's, it's a different um it's it's a different subject matter than you usually you know you know you're used to hearing on the radio, so yeah I think I would let people discover that one for sure. The second one that I would love to talk to you about is um, the one that I actually released a couple of weeks ago, um, not quite officially yet, but it's called Love Vertigo, and this one is a little bit more pop. Definitely, it has more of an electronic side to it. Um, more danceable, more disco almost, uh, with a bit of four on the floor, which is kind of nice. And um, this one is, um, well, this one actually is funny. I wrote that one because I had vertigo. I was in bed and I couldn't get up and I was not feeling well. And then I thought, well, falling in love is kind of like that. You know, you kind of, you know, you don't know if you're going to fall or you don't know if you're going to lose your bearings. And I thought, well, that's kind of funny. I should apply this situation into a song and so that's how love vertigo came about and this one is um it, this one is about you know like falling to somebody and like you don't know if you're going to fall the right you know in the on the right side of almost the tightrope so you're walking this tightrope and you don't really know um what's going on it's kind of fresh love it's kind of new so yeah this one is uh i, I like i know that one definitely i do that story in my car <laughs> when it comes <laughs> on my shuffle <laughs> It, it sounds like a fun song. Can you, you can also tell us about your um, other songs as well, too, before you let people know where they can hear your music. So your other two songs, sure. if there's others, feel free to talk about it. Sure. So I'm currently ro- working on other songs. So they'll be coming up um, shortly um, with it. 
I think within the next two months. Um, but I did I did do a lot of arrangements. So can can hide love and love um, can hide love and. I-